we have with us uh, Dr. Manuel Hassassian, a Palestinian American professor. He's a representative of the Palestinian Authority to the U to the United to the to Denmark, and he was earlier the representative of PA to the UK. And we have we are honored uh, by your presence, sir. And we would like you to take us through the ongoing Israel Gaza conflict and uh, what is the road forward, sir? I think uh, today we are at a stalemate with Israel for the simple fact that they are not listening to the international community plead to stop the carnage against innocent civilians by the destruction of buildings and hospitals. And uh, it's taking the green light from the United States of America and Europe, unfortunately, instead of them playing an instrumental uh, role in stopping this carnage against innocent civilians, they're giving the green light to Israel to continue while not even condemning what Israel is doing, but they are supporting Israel and they are blaming Hamas for all this kind of conflict. This is not the case today. We are beyond condemnation. We look at what is happening today uh, on the television screens all over the world, what is happening in terms of maiming, killing children, women, bombardment, cutting electricity, food, uh, what have you. And yes. uh, still nothing has been done to stop this atrocious, heinous crimes against humanity. So uh, how do you see, uh, what is the end road? I mean, how do we see this conflict ending? Do you see a truce somewhere uh, in the horizon? If the United States and Europe are convinced that military solution is no solution to this conflict, then I become a little bit optimistic that they might put some sense into this extreme fascist government in Israel to come to the tables and first, the cessation and the truce is a first step in the right direction. The opening of humanitarian corridors is the second step. The third step is the releasing, the releasing of hostages or exchange of hostages. And fourthly, political accommodation is the only way out. Unfortunately, so far, the international community led by the United, led by the United States have been dealing with the Palestinian-Israeli conflict, which is a protracted conflict as a crisis management, not in the context of conflict resolution. And that's why for 30 years, the international community has shouldered the responsibility of securing a two-state solution, but failed dismally. And that gave the, and that gave the green light to Israel to build more settlements and to create an uncontiguous geographic zones among the Palestinian cities and villages and transferring 750,000 settlers into the West Bank. So how are we going to have an independent Palestinian state when our geographic contiguity is non-existence and when Israel is building more settlements, creeping annexation, ceding more land and killing the entire Oslo agreement uh, fully? So where do we stand now? We need ultimate pressure to be put on Israel. And the only country that could put pressure on Israel, one is the United States, second is Europe. But the rest are immaterial in trying, you know, uh, to have certain political teeth or weight in uh, pu putting Israel on, on its toes to stop this incessant aggression against the Palestinians in Gaza. So what is your hope with the Americans since you, you say it is for the United States to put a stop to this? What is your hope with President Biden in Tel Aviv? Uh, this is the second, this is the second visit. I am very pessimistic that President Biden will put pressures on Israel. Maybe he will try, he will try to have uh, convincing uh, Netanyahu or the war cabinet for an open corridor for assistance. But we don't see in the long run the role of the United States in, uh, in the conflict resolution because we lost them as a third party long time ago because of their unequivocal support to the state of Israel for, since the creation of Israel. So we don't have trust in the Americans for a resolution of this conflict, but maybe they can play uh, some role in easing the tensions against the Palestinians.
But look, we didn't see any condemnation, rightful condemnation from the United States, from President Biden to Israel's bombing yesterday of, of, uh, of the hospital in Gaza. They so put what the blame I, on Islamic Jihad. Yeah, the, and we have really, proved, we have proved that the missile was an American missile from an Israeli uh, airplane, war plane. And it has been proven, you know, that it is not from Islamic Jihad. Islamic Jihad does not have American war missiles map. And Islamic Jihad's uh, intention is not to kill Palestinian people. So, I mean, this fabrication that the military in Israel has been doing, and I'll give you an example. Did they, didn't they say that they, they have decapitated, you know, uh, Israeli children, you know, by yes. Hamas? Yes. And we have, and we have, Hamas has shown on television how they treated the women and the kids on television, those hostages, and so the fabrication of what I call a psychological warfare to try to uh, 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 try to brainwash the international community in order to justify its bombings is not a surprise for us Palestinians. And unfortunately, the Western prey for Israel to believe them and to go along with them because they are biased against the Palestinians. Unfortunately, I'm saying this. Yesterday, we attended a press conference on Zoom by the IDF chief who said, this is not our war. This was triggered by Hamas. Uh, you know, we, we never wanted this war. So, yeah. Yeah. What about the uh, what about the six wars before? What about uh, fifty six years of occupation of a people killing them every day? What about that? What about state terrorism? They have no. They are a peaceful, loving people, giving us independence. We have nothing to do. We are an independent state, uh, trying to uh, uh, attack their sovereignty. I mean, what is this stupidity? How could people put the occupier and the occupied on equal footing? And please don't fall in the prey that you don't see occupation and what occupation is doing for 6 million Palestinians in Gaza and the West Bank. So what are we talking about here? Who is the, the terror here? Blood bleeds blood, violence breeds violence, unfortunately. We are against violence. But how can we stop violence when we are under occupation and under killing, the, the extrajudicial killing every day, building settlements, exploding, you know, uh, buildings. I mean, uh, nobody talks about this. They talk about Hamas. I don't represent Hamas and I'm not part of Hamas. I represent the Palestinian people. I represent the legitimacy of, of my government. I don't care about what Hamas has done. But... The world should not punish, you know, the entire Palestinian people through the Israelis and what they're doing because what Hamas has done. Is this a fair play? Their allegation is, again, that, you know, Hamas is using the Palestinians as human shields. So they've asked for mass evacuation. Uh, where do these people go, sir? They have nothing. They, there is nowhere to go except the desert or the sea. And the people in Gaza and the Palestinians and the leadership are not going to accept the forceful diasporization of the Palestinians. We are not going to revisit the 1948 Nakba again. Israel has been telling these people, go to the south because it will be uh, safe for you. What they did yes. yesterday, they wanted the people to go there so as they could bombard them. How could humanity accept the bombardment of hospitals? I ask this question. What is the end result of this war? It's the decimation of the Palestinians in Gaza, later in the West Bank, throw them into Jordan and Sinai, and solve the Palestinian problem by you know, just getting rid of them. This is what Israel wants. Israel wants, it wants a solution. A solution that is controlled basically by Israel with no plan. This is ethnic cleansing by, par excellence, man. How far 
the world is going to accept Israel to continue with its policies of extermination of the Palestinian people. So do you, you, you do not represent uh, the Hamas and you are, I mean, but at the same time as a Palestinian, what happened on October 7, uh, I would like you to comment on that. Was I don't that... want to comment. I don't want to comment on that for the simple fact that people should ask why Hamas has done this. Why do you want me to condemn Hamas and not let Israel condemn its state terrorism? Do you put Hamas on equal basis with the state of Israel and what Israel has been doing to the Palestinians for 50 six years is this a fair question nobody wants violence enough if i say i don't believe in violence we don't want violence to continue because innocent people are being killed and that has to stop and there is no solution military solution except a political solution this is where we have to conduct our interview and continue with this frame of stopping this carnage and going back to the senses because pragmatism, political accommodation is the way out. Now we are looking at a way out, not at the reason of what happened. I could take you to the root cause of the conflict. Then where do we end? So what happened to the meeting that uh, President uh, Mahmoud Abbas want, uh, was planning to have in Jordan and it has been pulled out after yesterday's attack? So, yes. yeah, so, I mean, why did that happen? It happened because what Israel did yesterday, it's horrible. The least the president could do is not to talk with Joe Biden about what Hamas has done, but it's about humanitarian assistance. And that was a simple reaction. When people are being bombarded, the president should be you know, with them. So he decided to leave. He went to Ramallah. And graciously enough, President uh, Sisi and King Abdullah also apologized for this meeting because they cannot see the Americans being serious to stop the aggression. The Americans are trying as much as possible to protect Israel from any kind of escalation regionally, of course, by claiming that Iran and Hezbollah will be involved in the war. And they have their war machine, their, their USSS uh, Eisenhower in the Mediterranean ready to bombard anybody who would interfere on behalf of Israel for Israel to continue its, its mission of getting rid of the Palestinians as many as they can before they accept a ceasefire and sit down and talk about human corridor. The other allegation along with uh, this morning's meeting uh, announcement by the IDF that it was Islamic Jihad which carried the airstrike yesterday at the hospital. Um, what do you think is Iran's involvement? How long? Uh, is Iran watching? Is Tehran going to interfere or will it support through Hezbollah? I mean, what is, what would be, how is it escalating? Yes. First of all, you said the uh, airstrike by Jihad. Jihad does not have war planes to strike against Palestinians and bombing Palestinians. Okay. Now this is number one. Number two, number two, Iran, yes, is supportive of Islamic Jihad. But Iran has not been involved so far in, the, in this war. They are not present there. They are not even, they are not even asking their proxy uh, uh, ally, which is Hezbollah in southern Lebanon, to be actively involved in this war. So Iran said, we have nothing to do with this war. We have support to the Palestinian problem. We are we, we're supporting the Palestinian people. And we are, of course, you know, we are supporting, you know, uh, uh, the resistance movement uh, carried out by the Palestinians. 
We are not going to condemn what Hamas has, has done or what have you. We condemn state terrorism. This is Israel is a rogue state. Instead of attacking Iran for not interfering, you are uh, basically supporting the state of Israel. This is the position of Iran. And what about the role of uh, other Gulf countries, for instance, Saudi Arabia? I mean, do you think they're going to back the Palestinian cause? I mean, how, how far do you see their involvement in? They have already uh, been supportive of the Palestinian uh, situation. They have been coordinating with President Mahmoud Abbas. Uh, the Saudis stopped all kinds of communications on the issue of normalization with the United States and that of Israel. Uh, the Saudis are ready for humanitarian assistance. And uh, politically, they are not going to be involved with Israel or the United States until the aggression, the war of aggression against the innocent civilians in Gaza will stop. That's the position, basically, of Saudi Arabia. Qatar is not uh, being involved directly with this issue, but they are ready for humanitarian assistance. Qatar has been supportive of Hamas, as you know, politically. And uh, Qatar's position is today no communication basically with Israel until this war stops. The, the same situation with the United Arab Emirates, they're trying to keep a low profile. Uh, they condemned what Israel, Israel's attacks on the, uh, uh, on the hospital. And uh, many other Arab countries like Syria, Iraq, Yemen, all are supportive of the Palestinians. Do you call this? Do you see this as a watershed movement in this in in this resistance movement against uh, uh, occupation? I mean, would you see this after seven, 1973, the escalation? The escalation goes back basically for never ending occupation. If occupation ends, peace will prevail and prosperity will prevail, security will prevail in the Middle East. But to leave a rogue state like Israel, continuing occupation, six million people, killing them every day, is not a solution. And Israel cannot have peace and tranquility without relinquishing the territories of 1967, which is a part and parcel of the two-state solution the Oslo Agreement, which the international community has blessed. So according to you, the two-state solution is dead? In reality, it is dead. But if Israel withdraws from the occupied territories, it's yet alive. But so far, it is dead. So why do you think America wouldn't want this to stop? I mean, on the face of it, they are saying that uh, Joe Biden said that it would be a grave mistake if Israelis reoccupy Gaza. Uh, so, what should they do to stop this? They should order Netanyahu and his government that we will stop military aid, we will stop financial aid if you don't stop this war. This is what the Americans should do now. Not supporting them indefinitely and telling them and telling the world that they are, you know, uh, fighting for their survival in self-defense against, you know, Palestinian terrorists. This is not going to help the image of the United States. And it's not going to put pressure on Israel by saying that. The only pressure Israel understands is money, the cutting of financial aid, military aid, stop aid to Israel, and then Israel will basically sit down and think twice before continuing its occupation. But do you think that as a that is a possibility? Well, maybe it's a remote possibility, but uh, now you know elections is going on in the United States and uh, President Biden, by supporting Israel, is supporting the uh, Jewish communities to, to vote for him in the United States because it will be a very... Uh, 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 Competitive elections with president with ex president Trump. Trump, yes. I think the, the Republicans, yes. So, at a personal level, as a Palestinian, how is it to to live 
in occupation, under occupation? I what live, is the aspiration? Yeah. Yes. I live in constant fear. I live in, in insecurity. I live at any moment I will be a martyr. And how is that feeling to, to, to live with? How do you motivate yourself to keep up this alive? I mean, because I believe, I believe in God. I believe peacefully with myself. I believe what is destined is destined. I pray for God and I pray for a divine intervention to stop this carnage and this killing. And what is your hope that during your lifetime would you... Do you think that Palestinian state would be a fulfillment? I'm 69 years old, ma'am. Maybe not in my lifetime. But as uh, my uh, uh, the Italian philosopher, I just, you know, I'm having Alzheimer's now, who said there is always the pessimism of the intellect and optimism of the goodwill. So now... I am in the stage of the op of the pessimism of the intellect since I am a professor and a diplomat. And the optimism of goodwill will give me the stamina to hope that this conflict one day is going to end and the Palestinians will have their freedom and their independent state, inshallah, by God's will, as we say in Arabic. Thank you so much, sir, for your time. And you. uh, we appreciate your... Uh, Thank you you talking to us it's my pleasure uh, we hope sincerely hope and pray that peace prevails and innocent lives are not lost anymore thank Absolutely. you so much thank you thank you ma'am thank you it's